Hiya, how are you doing? Have you done something fun yet? Well, let's do something fun together. Like having a go at the Sophie and Toffee May box. We're going to have a go at the backgammon game. Now, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, I don't do so well, um, but more about that later. Right now, I'm going to start um, using these lovely pigments that we've been given, and I'm just going to rub some on the outside of this, um, the edges around this mould, which is the game board mould. I'm going to do half in one colour and half in the other, which is I'm going to do the one end and then halfway down the sides with one colour and the one end and the other end and halfway down the sides with the other colour. Okay, as you can see, the little tab that you take off that um, seals in the pigments quite often has a ton of pigment on it. So I'm taking that off and I'm using that um, first. As you can see, I've done nearly the whole of the end in this. And I actually get halfway down the sides too. But I'm not going to make you painfully watch me do all of this. I'm just going to do some of it so that you can see what I'm doing. And I know I'm mostly off screen at the moment, but hey, what can you do about it? Yeah, so just using the um, eyeshadow pad thingy, I still can't remember what it's called. Taking pigment off the, the tab and laying it down on here. Now, I haven't had a great week so far. Um, actually not done too bad, but my, my fibre is suffering a bit. So I'm not feeling great, bit of a fuzzy head, so I don't really think half of my decisions through when making this. And that's why I end up failing, but you know, these things happen. But we'll have fun along the way. So yeah, just dabbing into the little pot. I'm spreading it all along the sides. My thought process behind this was any what I wanted was to put the colour on the sides, but I wanted it to look kind of distressed. And then um, I'm going to use the glitter when I do the pour, and I wanted that to kind of come through. Kind of works, but not 100%. And you'll see that in a minute. Sorry if you can hear my fan in the background, but it is way too hot to turn it off. Um, right, okay, so if you have any troubles with the 3 to 1 resin, and knowing... Um, how to measure out the individual measurements this is a really good website that you can go use and um, you just put in the um, the numbers at the top and it gives you the measurements I've weighed it all out and I'm just putting in the glitter I do put plenty in because I wanted to give a really good effect so I've stood all that in And just pouring it out. I really wish I'd have put tape across that little bar space there so that I didn't use as much resin, but on the first pour. But you live and learn, don't you? If I was going to do it again, that's what I would do. Getting every last bit out. I'm 
I'm making sure I've covered the whole of the bomb. I love the 321 resin because it gives you so much time to play around, to change your mind, to add things in. I don't feel rushed at all when I'm using the 3 to 1 resin. I know it takes longer to cure and it's a pain if it's a if you're in cold windy cold wet weather it takes even longer. But it just means you're not rushed. Okay, just checking the instructions here to see which way up the um, magnet boards need to go. Now I've used these magnet boards before and I know they're not great, so I'm just going to see how it goes. If nothing else, it'll be a good backdrop. I'm not going to put you through the pain of watching me get it all to go sink under the resin. As you can see, that's me starting to do that, I'm starting to push out all the air from underneath it and bring the resin up and over it. And there you go. And that took me quite a while to do, and then I'm, now I'm doing this, and this is all still pliable. You're not wrecking resin in any way, shape, or form. If it, this was one-to-one -one resin, then, you know, you wouldn't be able to do this. You wouldn't be able to take this amount of time. And putting this in, getting all the bubbles out, you, it would already start to be set. You'd already be wrecking it by now. That's why I love three-to-one resin. Just trying to get some bubbles out. I really should have placed this in better, but my hands are driving me mad and I just ended up dropping it. Wasn't what I planned to do, trust me. There we go, I managed to big pop that big bubble. Just trying to get most of the bubbles from underneath. It's working. Squeezing all those bubbles out. Squeezing them out. <laughs> yeah, getting all the Thankfully the resin is still workable even now. Sorry, that's my puppy. What are you doing, Magnus? What are you doing? Yeah, just trying to get the resin to coat the top of it now. I'm trying to clear the last few bubbles. Playing with his toys. <laughs> Magnus. Right. I'm just showing you now. I'm just getting all the stuff off the edges, putting the last few bits off. And then I'm gonna squeeze all the sides in in a minute, I'm sure. Yeah, just pulling the last bit across, making sure I've covered the whole thing. Because the last thing you want is little bits of area that you haven't covered. So take your time doing this, if this is the way you're going to do it. You might want to put it on afterwards. Totally out, up to you, this is just the way I did it. I'm not saying I did it right by any means. If 
if you watch that bubble at the very top left hand corner you'll see that it degasses itself in a minute ready watch it it's gonna pop a day there you go <laughs> and that's the other beauty of three to one resin is it does degas itself lovely which means the bubbles bubbles pop themselves right this is 24 hours later and this hasn't quite cured it's cured enough to demold it but very carefully because it's still flexible at this at this stage so you need to be careful if you're going to demold it this early i like to demold it this early if it's not an intricate piece if it's a simple piece like this i like to just take it out i find it um helps it to set a lot quicker than if you leave it in the mold but be very careful because you can um misshapen your cast at this point especially if it's an intricate piece like say if it's just a tray or something like this as long as you're being careful it shouldn't be a problem and you can reshape it right reshape it to a certain degree you see i'm pushing it down i'm re setting that piece so it's nice and straight oh great magnus no <sighs> managed to find a crest packet <sighs> yes tell everyone i had crisps today why don't you tell everyone i had crisps yeah right so that's the um the one side finished and i really like it it's nice and glossy and I'm just going to check out, see if the magnets work before I start making the pieces. As you can see, it seems to work. They seem to be sticking. Not, um, not all that strong, granted, but it still seems to be working. What are you doing? Okay, so here's making the little pieces. I'm going to use some leftover UV resin that I have from another box. And I'm going to use these blue and green um, mica powders that we have that have that I had. Now I'm going to use quite a bit of it because I do want it to be um, vibrant. Magnus! <laughs> oh my goodness. No. Should wait until your puppy's asleep, but it's nearly midnight and he's still not asleep, so. <sighs> so just mixing it up really well right now. And, um,. Yeah, you really need to take your time on this and mix it in really well because the last thing you want is um, the loose mica powder coming out in blobs. So just making sure it's really mixed well. And I'll be pouring it in because that looks like it's almost done. And 
And here we go. I did try speeding all of this up, but I don't know what's going on with my computer at the moment, but it, it really doesn't like it. It seems to glitch something chronic when I try and speed them up. So unfortunately, you've got it in real time. I'm not going to pick you through the pain of pouring them all out. So you'll just see me pour a couple out. And then you'll see that they're all full. So here we go, they're all filled up. And now comes the fun of the magnets. And trust me, it was fun. I'm just trying to, um, <laughs> sorry, my puppy again. I was just trying to um, flash cure them a little bit there so that they didn't flop right down to the bottom, but as you can see, that didn't work. <laughs> And um wasn't expecting that to happen either. <laughs> At this point, I'd had enough and was absolutely in fits of giggles when this happened. <laughs> My poor neighbours. I don't know what they were thinking. Mind you, they're quite used to me yet, right now. <laughs> used to me now. Probably didn't phase them in the slightest. Trying to figure out what are we going to do now? <laughs> and still laughing my pants off. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> so, and I've got to do a little bit of clean up. And then I'm going to put it under the light. And we'll try another method. I still can't believe that happened. <laughs> okay, just sticking it under the main UV light. It's there, they're all cured. So, here we go. Just dabbing a little bit in there. Put in the magnet in. And thought it would be a good idea to put some more resin over the top to hide the magnet. Yeah, don't do this. Don't make my mistakes. Anyway, cure it. Turned out quite nice. Show about the tiny little hole, but the real flower looks really pretty. And no, no magnetism at all. No, nope, none at all. But don't worry, I do sort that out eventually just by sanding it down, back down so that there's no longer resin covering the magnet. And then it works fine. Okay, so the next one. I'm just putting a bit on. Putting the 
magneton. Oops. Went in sideways. That's the way. And then curing it with a UV light. I do put them all under the um, lamp at the very end. But I don't think I showed that. Okay, Marie, come on. Come on, move along. That's enough. It's done now. Any time now. Oh, there we go. Right, so just checking this one works. The resin does make the um, magnet hot, so it doesn't work straight away. I might give it a minute. Magnet cools down, and this time it works. And it works both sides, so that's quite good too. So here we go. I didn't have enough 3 to 1 resin left to completely cover to make the second mould, even though I taped up that bit to try and save me some um, resin, but it just wasn't enough. And I haven't got any more 3 to 1 resin currently at the moment. So, yeah, can't complete this at the moment. And that's everything. But before I go, the next time you decide you don't like the way someone looks, just remember, when you take away all the squishy parts, we're all just skeletons, aren't we? Try being kind. The results might just surprise you. Thanks for watching.